Hello guys, welcome to the OK Show. As always, my name is Ongo Kenya. Today we're going to discuss beauty beyond the skin. That's how we're going to put it. Or born to white. Welcome Sharon on OK Show. Thank you very much. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. You're yeah, looking good. I'm blessed. You're blessed. That is God's name. Yeah. Can I remove my mask? <laughs> Please do so. Please do so. What you are wearing? 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 What I'm Manas in my profession and I'm a, I'm a community or a society lover. I love working with my community, with my society. I love enlightening our society about everything that is happening to the best knowledge that I can. You know, at, at the moment, I lead this group called Empowered Amazing Group this year. It is a small organization that I came up with in around 2013 when I was still schooling. By that time, I was a second year in KMTC in Kisi. So we 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 were three, I, Colin Somajo, and George Onya, all persons with abilism. The others are men, but at the moment, they are different places. That's why they are not here with me. But we came up with this group. So that we can sensitize people in Busia County about persons living with albinism, since less people know um, more about us, and we want just to sensitize them, let them get it from the horse's mouth. Exactly, that, yeah. that is the reason. The horse's why. mouth. That, that this is what it is, and we are here. Yeah, yeah. That is, that is the reason as to why I was very interested uh, on inviting you on the show because personally, me. I didn't grew I, I grew up where there were not so many abilism yeah in my area yeah but let us start our show maybe you can start by telling us what albinism is albinism is a genetic condition that takes place after two parents carrying the the genes for albinism eh? they come together and they produce a person living with albinism. Generally, it is just the lack of melanin pigment in your body, not necessarily in your skin. It will happen in your hair, in your eyes, in your skin, making you vulnerable to ultraviolet light from the sun, and it will make your eyes not be comfortable when you're walking under the sun, making you squeeze your eyes when you're walking or you feel irritated on your skin when you expose so much when the sun is too high. Okay, I've yeah. also done uh, my research. Mm. I think we have two types of uh, albinism. Mm -hmm. Do you know them maybe? You the the ocular types? and the ocular cutaneous. Okay. Those, these are two types. That is in the ocular one is not the ocular one is not more common here in Africa. It's more common in the United States. But the oculocutaneous is more common in African sub-Saharan countries, whereby they they lack the pigment in all the body, and this they, they are not those are the most common one. But we have different. There are five types of albinism. There are those people who they are only applied. They, they lack the pigment in the eyes only. There are those who lack the pigment in your, the skin only. And there are those who lack the pigment in some parts of their body. Though, for them, we call them the vitiligos. You can just see part in her body or his body. It is in uh, it's light-skinned. That is called vitiligo. Okay. But it is categorized under albinism because they, are also, they also need the therapies. There are some of them who need, they will need the sunscreen. Okay. So the most common one is this, the oculocutaneous. And the... Uh... There is this, uh, should I say it, or I don't know if at all I'm going to offend some people. There is this black albinism, mm -hmm. too black, but it is albinism. Yeah, they are dark and their eyes yeah. are, 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 lack the pigment. 
they are also persons with albinism Albinism. because they will need the help okay yeah and uh, uh, let me just uh, today I've prepared some questions today I'm not go you know people are used to me asking questions uh, from my head Mm -hmm. so today I'm pre I've prepared some questions I'll just start by what you are you are an aspect profession yeah what was school like you learned uh, you schooled in Kenya yeah for me I was lucky enough because my parents were very much concerned about me. I was born in this hospital that I'm working in yes. way back in 1990. Yes. In this maternity ward, although they are now building a new one, and I schooled in St. Joseph Busia Girls Primary. I went to Wabuyes, uh, St. Cecilia Girls, okay. Misihu. Thereafter is when I went to do my my nursing. Although in the middle here I've done sign language, I've done I've done some other courses, very short courses, just to keep me uh, at, at least on a higher notch because the world is changing. Yeah. My school life was, I can say it was funny because I cannot say that I'm much exposed the way I am now. Because I can remember there were bad sides, there were good sides. Yeah. Because there are sometimes I used to ask my mom, why is it that I'm different from others? Yeah. Why is it that I cannot, I can also, also play the way others are playing? Because the moment I could go out, I could feel the sun too much on my skin and it irritates me. If you check well in my skin, I'm having some spots. These are sunburns. But they took place way back when I was very young. At the moment, we use sunscreens. By that time, I was not using sunscreen. Yeah. So it was a bit hard because I could not understand myself. I could not understand anything at school because other children used to say I am a curse and some of their parents never used to enlighten them uh, compared to now. And uh, funny enough, there's a teacher who once chased me out of class. By that time, I was in standard two. Uh-huh. I stayed out of class for a whole year. I used to go to school, but I could not go to class because the teacher has sent me out. Why? So after repeating, because I could not see what he was, she was teaching. Okay. So she became so much irritated. And I didn't know also why I could not see and others were seeing. So what I used to do, I used to check in my classmates' um, notes. And sometimes I could uh, copy wrong things. So this teacher became so much irritated, irritated because I could not even write well because the, I'm copying exactly what this other pupil is writing. Yeah. So she became irritated, chased me out. So after some time, there was a teacher who came uh, from for a transfer in our school, and she became I can remember even her name. She was called Mrs. Kajangana, and then she she called my parents, had a session with them. Then they started taking me to Tororo, checking for sunscreens, although there was no, there were not much available. So my parents used to buy the sunscreen from Kisumu, and they bring it here for me to apply. Uh, studying was very hard a bit because of straining, and uh, more people didn't, didn't understand. And walking from Busia Girls to my home, my home is, is in... Karibuni estate, yeah. or just on your way from town to Karibuni, just I think five kilometers. So walking under that sun was a bit very hectic. But I used to say one day I need to, I need to enlighten the world about me. Yeah. So some other people used to chase me, so they call me words. But I, I thank God I'm very social. And I, did not, yeah, I, yeah, I didn't just, take it upon myself. I used to tell myself one day I have to tell them what I am made for, made of. Lucky enough, when I was in Form 4, there was this, uh, this topic in biology called genetics. Yeah. And the teacher used me as an example. And I was so comfortable and happy. And uh, when he, he, she explained and I went to my books, I loved studying a lot. And like especially the sciences subjects, so that that alone really built me. It built me, and I understood a lot about me. Did a lot of research, understood myself, and built myself confidence. And at home, are you the only one with albinism? Yes, among eight children. Eight children. Yeah. 
how do your siblings treat you? They are okay. They are okay. much okay. And in fact, they are proud of me. Most of my siblings are proud of me. Yeah. Yeah. Why are you not bullied in school? Yeah. Primary, high school, uh, campus life, how was it? Yeah, bullying was there, but uh, I think that's the way I told you before. I didn't take it so much. I used to say down in my heart, I will change this thing because they used to call me sorts of name. Yeah. And I used to convert that into my book. So I used to perform very well. So you, you, you abuse me, you talk ill of me, I beat you in class. So so <laughs> you don't have anything that can yeah can hold you. Yeah. So I beat you in class, you come again and ask me, how are you doing this? And I ask you, but you're saying I am this and this. Can yeah. this and this help you? Then you come down and then we work together. After that, you forget about you it. You forget about it. Yeah. So uh, what kind of challenges uh, do you face in your daily life right now? Mm, questions. Because the empowerment and uh, the sensitization is still very low in Busia County. It is still very low because even with the organization that I started, um, due to financial constraints, eh, I do very little. So what I do when I get this a chance to get a person, a person with albinism, I get a chance to have a one-on-one -on -one talk, either with the parents or the, the individual, him or herself. When we talk, I get to know this person. And I, I tell him or her that this is the way things are. Most of them, sometimes they tell me, you, because you have money, that's why you look so well. I yeah. tell them, no. Nibidiyango. Nibidiyango de nanifanya. I am like this. Kama ningeka tu, singeweza. Because I had to go to school. I never went to a special school. Nilienda in the normal schools. So, bidiyango de nanifanya na nataka nyipia. Nifanya kama mimi. If it is possible, this county to get a wale donors, ama wale non-governmental organization, and you are coming to empower these men and women with albinism specifically. Wawasaidi ata kufanya kitu na mikono yao. They are talented. Even if it is it is to to sell some few things so that they can know that it is important to take care of yourself. It is important to take care of others. It is important to appreciate each other. Because for them, they think that I am using more money or I'm using uh, something extra to keep myself. But it is nothing. Nothing that I get from the government apart from the sunscreen. Yeah. yeah. From, the, from the Albinism Society of Kenya. Mm. Yeah. The, so the Albinism Society of Kenya used to work in partnership with National Council for Persons with Albinism. Mm -hmm. So National Council for Persons with Albinism provides these sunscreens and the hats and the long-sleeved t-shirts. Mm -hmm. But it is not sustainable. They bring it this year, it stays like three years. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> or sometimes, Kemsa people, this county has not paid, yeah. so the sunscreen is not supplied. Okay. You see, it is not now sustainable. But if these people, men and women, know the importance of this sun, they can even get it. Or at the moment now that we have it in stock in our public facilities, some of them tell me that we don't have transport to come and pick the sunscreen, which is very now hard to me. How do I reach these people with my sunscreen? Now the sunscreen is here in the facility. And maybe they're how located do I, in the remote areas. Yeah how, yeah, how do I now reach them? It is very hard. Very tough. Yeah. Very tough, very tough. So uh, I've heard of these stories that... Uh, Albinism in Tanzania, in Tanzania, in, in Kenya, I don't know if at all the the cases are in there. This, but the, the issue of myths, no, the myths, uh, no, the misconceptions, myths and misconceptions, and also the killings in Tanzania. I've heard of uh, some albinisms being killed. Yeah, I've heard of those stories. Have you ever experienced or have you ever been approached or felt like okay, someone is haunting my life? <laughs> and that's why. I told you, thank you for the question. I can still tell you I'm a very tough lady. I even went and did taekwondo. 
when I heard about that, because it was spreading so fast, yeah, yeah. in this time of social media, they, they were told, I think that time I'm still also schooling, I was finishing my school, well, 2014, yeah? I was finishing, I think that's the year that I was almost graduating. So they were talking about us, that uh, they are a lot other than killing. They were saying that uh, if you sleep with a person in albinism and you have HIV AIDS, you will get killed. If you want to get rich, you get a person, a person living with albinism, you use that part of his or her body, you will get money. So these killings were coming because of rapes, because of these young girls uh, who are raped, because they think that they will get the money, or they will get they will get healed of HIV AIDS, or they got riches. But it is wrong. The killings were there, and we were, we are really fighting against them. Even in last year, uh, I think in last year May in Zimbabwe, there was a baby nine months who was chopped off one part of the arm mm. because the father of the child was told by a navy or a hooligan somewhere that if you give me that child's arm i'm going to give you riches so the father was even ready to sacrifice yeah, the, the, the parents the, are even negotiating yeah they negotiated because now they have the riches it was a very big scene so the mother was uh, lied to because now the mother is desperate and the father is supposed to provide so he said, I'll come and I'll come very late. So he came with the hooligans at night. So they hold the mother tight. They went inside, chopped off the, the baby's arm and left. Very inhuman. Very, very inhuman. How can someone do something like that? It is very To bad. a child. Yeah, it is very bad. To a child. Mm. Okay, uh, what do you need people to know about albinism? Albinism is not is not something that should make you scared. You should not be scared about persons with albinism. Never should you think that we are different. We are only having a light skin. And we are only lacking the melanin pigment in our body. But we are very normal very much normal. We do everything normally. You see that the weather for today, yeah. I don't have my hat on. I can do my, my things very comfortably. So my enemy, number one, is that sun. And that's why I'm in my glasses. Yeah. yeah. So we are normal human beings. There is nothing different about us. It's just that, that this condition is making us to be, to be afraid of the sun so much. But once we have the sunscreen, we do all our activities okay. I can dig, I can cook. You're not vulnerable. Yeah. You know, some people think that uh, you can't do hard, yeah, hard chores. Can, yeah, yeah, I can't do hard chores. Even some, uh, very fortunate, some of my colleagues, they, I think they were clinical interns. They are even asking me, how did I get into a relationship, what I view. I was going there. I was just <laughs> going to ask you, let me just yeah. uh, attach up on your personal personal life. Mm. Uh, are, you, are you in a relationship? And if at all you're not, have mm. you ever experienced this dating? And how was it? Yeah, dating sometimes when you're dating someone and the others say that you're dating this person, he or she is not going to help you. So you find you, you, you are in a broken relationship a lot. This is affecting you psychologically. This will affect you. You have some traumas that no one will understand. But they'll, 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 someone will break up with you simply because ameambiwa na mungine, uyu akufai, unona. But it, and it is the mentality of them that who you are kufai kwa sababu hawezi, hakufai because she doesn't have a skin like you. Or uh, mm. some people believe it ukiwa albino, you will get a child. Yeah, and it, it will never happen. If you have, unless you have carriers, we have, uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to talk about medicine a lot because that is the yeah. field that I am good with. If you check very well, at the moment we have a lot of babies with sickle cell. Why are we having babies with sickle cell? Because we have a lot of carriers with sickle cell. 
and will find two carriers they produce a, a sickle cell baby. Never will you get a person who is not a carrier and a person with albino getting a child that is living with albinism. Never. And never will you get two persons with albinism getting a, a, a black baby. Okay. It will never happen. Because these are carriers. So the moment I, I get someone who is not a carrier, who will get a normal child? For me, I have two kids. A boy and a girl. You're already married. <laughs> you don't look like you're married. You look young. You look young. I have two young. kids. Yes. Yeah, that's a story for another day about yeah. my children. <laughs> yeah. Young. And they are dark skinned. Okay, so and how do you how do you cope up with this? You are in the medical field, mm -hmm. you are a nurse, and you meet with the, you interact with different patients. So yeah. some patients will be like I don't want to be treated with that nurse, uh, she's a dino, or they fear you, you know? Yeah. yeah. You haven't treated yeah. awareness in the society. Yeah. Some of them, they fear albinos. They're like, when you get it, in Zungu, they yeah, have yeah. albinos, some of them fear them. So how do you cope up with that? Uh, fortunately, I've never met a patient who fear me, or, or maybe they fear me and they feel afraid yeah. because they don't know they even don't know how to tell me. Because once you go to a health facility, the service provider that you find there will attend to you whether you like it or not. And that is where God blessed me. Because the society came, it was like, oh, who you are fine? Because I remember I was once told that I will never finish my class eight. I will never, I will never have children. I will never, I will never do anything in my life. So what I do, what I do is to prove the society wrong. Even coming to this medical field, I wanted to, to give back to my society and tell them that in our Zekana it is possible. Mm. Yeah, we can do anything. So when they come in, uh, I'm very fortunately because recently we had Cuban doctors in our hospital, Sierra mm. County Referral Hospital. And some of them confuse me with the Cuban doctor. Yeah. <laughs> so for me, I, I am inside there. They are not sure. And some of them are, are the society members. So they remember, there is a lady who looks like, so they're like, are you so and so? But then, it is a privilege. Yeah, so right for, now, me, for me now it is a privilege. And yeah. some of them, they're like, oh, wow, this is so good of you. This is nice. We love this. Yeah. yeah. So they are, they are happy. And then, that, that that intuition in them in a in a GAUsha to a year on a pata and attack a two sister and lunge. Yeah. What can you tell the government to do for persons living in this in Adilis? I will I will trim it down to Musia County. Thank you. Just uh, I think just be specific. Uh, yes. I yeah. will be specific to Musia County government. Thank you. This is a group that has been forgotten for quite some time. This is a group that no one talks about it. We have different persons with disability. We have the physically challenged, the mentally challenged, the deaf and dumb, what have you. But persons with albinism, specifically in Busia County, they are forgotten about it. Recently, I had a one-on-one -on -one talk with the chief officer for uh, health and sanitation. And that is the day that I was telling him that do you know that we have sunscreens and lip balms and after sun in our county referral hospital? Do you know that these people are supposed to receive these sunscreens? Do you know that it is very important to them? And he was he was very much he was very much happy about the the situation and the message that I had brought to him. Because this is a group that has been forgotten. I pray and I pray so hard that the county government should also try and recognize us. Because I tried even building proposals, coming up with proposals, I take to the offices, no one bothers. And I really wish this group also to be recognized so that we can stop this myth and misconception. And, this, and with this, we will build them psychologically with a lot of self-confidence. They will yeah. walk the way they walk. Yeah, confidence. Yeah. 
sorry to say, but uh, there has been this mean. I don't know if at all it is still there, but uh, and we know body parts can boost business. If at all, it is wrong. Yeah, you yeah, know, it is, it is. since I was a kid, uh, I, I was I was hearing these stories. Actually. Ati mwili, ukikata mwili ya albino, mm. ama sijima fupa, ukieka kwa duka, kwa biyashara, wakaja watakuja wengi, utauza. Yeah, yeah, that is a myth. It's just a myth. It's just a myth. Yeah. And uh, I've seen your eyes, uh, you know, if I told you, it's literally. It is called nystigmas. It is shaking, shaking. In the medical field, we call it nystigmas. Yeah. Nystigmas. It is it, because of lack of that pigment. Yes. It 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 looks like it is dancing or it is glittering. Yeah. But that is now the normal side of me because I cannot change it. I don't do it. It does it itself. Do you feel it? No. You don't feel it. I don't feel it. Okay. Yeah. I thought maybe you feel it. Or I change it. it. Or oh, I'm the one uh, the involuntary movement of the eyes. Yeah. Yeah. As we wind up our show, what can we take? What can we? What can people do to create awareness in the society so that people know that albinism is normal? Albinism is there. You can base specifically in this account because you are in this account and there is a gap of that. Yeah, I will urge all parents, all neighbors. I know even there are some babies or children who have been left orphans because of their condition of being a person with albinism. I will urge each and everyone around Busia County, in all the sub county, including the Matayos, Butula, Samia, Teso South, Teso North, and Nambale. Please, please, if you see a neighbor, if you see a child with albinism, I will really love it if you can connect him or her to me. I've said I work in Busia County Federal Hospital. I'll give. I'll only give my number. Okay. If you're not, if you if you don't mind, I'll take that number and pin it. And you pin it. Yeah. Uh, so I'll, I'll, you can connect that child to me because here. I'll be in a position to talk with this person. Yeah. I'll be in a position to fetch this person the best way I can so that I can tell even in that area the importance of this person being empowered. Because if this child is left there even to die or to, to, with no production, we are losing. Yeah. And we, we want this population also to be known to others. Everyone should know that a person with albinism should get this assistance. The sunscreens are there. The after suns are there. And maybe you should tell them. You should tell them why albinos, albino, albinos need sunscreens. The sunscreen will help us with the sun because the sun is our enemy. When you apply that sunscreen, it makes you. It it kind of builds some melanin in your skin. Yeah. So to make that ultraviolet light not to penetrate your skin. It will prevent you from the skin cancers. And if you don't have the sunscreen? The sunscreen, at the moment it is there. That's why I want them to come and pick them. It is given free of charge. Okay, I just want you to bring out this point that uh, there is an albino somewhere who cannot afford a sunscreen or who cannot afford to come and pick that sunscreen. That is the challenge that I have. Because I have a, another client in Amurai, mm -hmm. to so South. This child, the parents kept this child in a house, mm -hmm. and uh, this child they has not gone to school. This child knows nothing about sunscreen. So until she has developed some bands on her skin yeah. mm -hmm. that makes the skin look very bad. So I tried reaching the regional officer for National Council of Person with Disability. And she told me that it has not been budgeted. So at the moment I am in a crisis. There are some people who cannot afford even that transport to come to Busia County Referral Hospital or to Kocholia Sub County Hospital or to Bunyala yeah. Sub County Hospital where this sunscreen is. If the government could have made it even easier to get this sunscreen to all the sub county hospitals and get the 
focal persons that can check on the distribution of these sunscreens so that they, they can know that these children are also here. And Vino is not applying sunscreen. Skin cancer. Skin cancer. Cancer is a very, very, very dangerous disease. Because this is a disease that makes your body build the, the antigens that are not required. So your body is fighting against itself. So once it starts fighting against your skin, what will you have for protection against your inner organs? Nothing. You are left to die. So sad. Yeah, very sad. Thank you so much for accepting our invitation to interview you. I'm and very grateful. You're very grateful. Do you have something, maybe as we wind up the show, you have something to tell the world or those people who will be watching you? Um, I'll tell each and everyone that Sharon is here to serve the people and I am here to continue empowering others. I'll take my time, even if it means with my life, I'll take it just to teach the world about persons with albinism. I think that is all. That is all. Yeah. And for me, I'll say you spread love. When someone is an albino, or not, just spread love. And albinism is normal. Yes, it is. Very, very They normal. should know that. Yeah. Albinism is not a curse. And there is beauty behind the skin. Yeah, an example. And, yeah, yeah, exactly. You are an example. <laughs> you are an example. Yeah. And kindly, if at all, you are a neighbor to an albino, kindly don't discriminate that person because that person is an albino. Very Straight true. love. And Everyone is equal. And spread this year, peace. This year, this year's theme we are having, uh, this year in June we are having the International Albinism Awareness Day. In Busia we will hold it, I think next week or next week, but one. Mm -hmm. Any person with albinism is invited in that occasion. I'll still have the talk and I'll still have the chance to spread the empowerment, the sensitization. I'll come with the sunscreen from the hospital to distribute. I'll, I'll conduct the regional officer to come with the hats and the t-shirts so that we can at least share the love with all persons with albinism in Busia County. I think I'll be honored to cover that event. Please, I'll come, I'll come, please I'll come. come. I'll please come. come. You, you, you were invited already. Okay, and yeah. I'm going to pin Sharon's number there on the screen. Let us meet on our next show. Thank you so much for staying tuned. May the Lord bless you. Thank you.